Hi, my name is Heather Moore, and I am a Pisankar Ka, which means that I make Pisanki. Uh, the name we use is Pisanki, many Pisanki, one Pisanka, and we've got everything from, this is an ostrich egg, we've got some chicken eggs, and duck, and wee little tiny quail eggs. So I grew up in a family that had a lot of arts going on, uh, music, creating by drawing, or I remember doing a lot of very detailed cutting out of like snowflakes or silhouettes when I was little. Um, so a lot of crafts that don't take a lot of investment to get into things that you could literally do with the leftover newspaper. Um, and Pisanki is a cultural thing. I grew up in Slavic village. Um, my family came from Slovakia and what was then the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, now Ukraine. And uh, Pisanki is one of our great cultural crafts and people like me who are still working with those crafts out in the rest of the world are called the diaspora of artists who are making eggs that maybe aren't traditional. We might not be using all the same, same techniques and designs, but it's coming from a very cultural place. So I had some success in some uh, doing work in music and in things like painting and uh, like embroidery and sewing and stuff like that, but I wound up settling on the Pisanki and the technique and the tradition of it because I saw that there was not a lot of people still creating this on even a ritual basis, like say around Easter. Um, and I remembered that this was something that we did like whenever a new baby was coming, or if there was a wedding or some big life event happening, we would make people a pasanka as a gift. And I, you know, I thought, I really need to get back into that. My kids were involved at the time. They wanted to learn. And I was like, okay, I will hunt down these very niche tools and see if I can make that happen. And uh, the Ohio Craft Museum, actually, every March, they do a, uh, like, a workshop on a weekend and they'll have one that's just for kids and one that's just for adults so that you can learn how to do uh, and write the song to yourself. Um, so I decided to uh, submit some work to uh, Accessible Expressions because I was working through some uh, identity around my disability and uh, how that was affecting my life and I saw that they were they had a call out and I was like I you know I think I have something that's gonna fit this theme um, I am very grateful to have uh, the support and encouragement from organizations like Arts Midwest and uh, GCAC and uh, the Accessible Expressions, Arts Impact, Art Possible, all of these groups have been so supportive of me and the work that I'm doing and honestly I would not be anywhere near where I am in my arts career right now if it hadn't been for that support and encouragement and you know the occasional email saying hey there's a call out for this grant I think you should put in your name and I there's been so many things that I would have never known about or thought to apply for on my own if I hadn't been getting that uh, those resources and support from all these organizations. So the most exciting part of being part of this exhibit, the Accessible Expressions, is one, seeing folks that I've known for a while 
succeed uh, and also be recognized. There are several other people in this year's exhibit that I had met doing things like the uh, Columbus Arts Festival and uh, through other organizations. And it was so cool to have so many friends in the room. Um, and just the uh, being, seeing my work in a quote unquote real museum, like the Cincinnati Art Museum where we opened, was almost game changing. It made me look at my work with a lot more confidence and a lot more professionally than probably I was before. And I almost didn't go to the open and see the uh, the ceremony at the beginning and find out that I had been awarded a prize as well, which was a total surprise. I almost didn't go because physically I was having a really bad time then and my family basically said, no, you need to see your work in this building. This is really important. And it turned out to be such a great day and really, yeah, kind of career changing for me. So thank you so much for all of these opportunities. Okay. Um, so if you're an artist, even if you don't think of yourself as an artist, but if you enjoy crafts, if you enjoy making art and you're thinking, you know, maybe this is an exhibit that I should apply to, do it. Just do it. The advice that I like to give people is that there is no such thing as talent. There is perseverance and resilience and all of these things that go into it. Anybody can learn how to draw if they put the time and effort, energy into it. And if you don't enjoy it, don't do it. But if you have a love for it and it makes you feel better in your own skin, then keep doing it and keep sending your work out and listening to the support of criticism and let the critics that are all haters, just let them go. Don't listen to them. You find the stuff that brings you joy and you hold on to it.